Hi everybody, this is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make this dress here. It's actually very easy to make. Um, and you can see. Now in the pictures you see I'm wearing a belt. Now it won't be tied around uh, extremely, it's not like extremely fitted around your waist and worse, unless you wear the belt with it, but you don't have to wear the belt. And also you can just make this a, a top. You don't have to make it the long dress that I did. Um, but I'm 5'3", so um, I'll tell you how to adjust the uh, length of it to make it as long or as short as you want. And if you look in the description box, I'll have um, the size of the panels that you need for whatever size that you're going for. So what do you say? You want to go ahead and get started on it? I think it turned out pretty nice. I like it. I'm not really a dress person, but it turned out really good. Let's do this. All right, before we get started, I'm just going to show you just a little bit about how it's constructed. Constructed That way you'll know when the time comes. So this piece is made up of two separate panels, as you can see, and each one is extremely long yet thin. See that? And there's two panels that are made exactly like this, long and thin. But what we do is we fold them in half, like that, and then we sew them up, okay, down the side. And we leave an arm op op opening. This one I have sewn. That way when you open it, it's doubled in size now. You know, an arm opening. So that is one half of your uh, article of clothing here, one half of your project. And then once the other one is sewn up the same way with the arm opening left, we will sew them together like this here and then on the back as well, leaving a neck opening. All right, so just so when you know when you're making a super long chain, but yet it's not very wide, now that you understand how it's gonna be put together, you understand why it looks kind of odd at first all right so let's go over what we're what we're gonna do all right so you i you know i told you how tall i was and how to you know the the gist on how it's sewn together you realize it's the two long pieces on each side and they're folded in half so if you want to make yours longer or shorter i'll tell you the multiple of the stitch that way you can adjust the length to your liking um other than that um, the stitch is rather easy to do. Um, you can add sleeves if you'd like. I kept mine at cap sleeves. And like I said, you can make it longer or shorter. You can make the v-neck um, up here more or less. That is entirely up to you. I always say it's your garment. You're making it, not me. You make it to however you'd like. So let's go ahead and check out the yarn that I use. Now remember, please refer to the description box for uh, the sizing. It'll give you uh, estimates on the amount of yarn yarn that you're gonna need. There's gonna be a gauge down there um, if you gauge your items. And there's gonna be an estimate um, on how big you need to make your panels. All right, so m measuring mine, um, before I sewed those uh, two very, very long panels together uh, for the size I'm making, they measured about 74 inches. Now, after it's all sewn together, it's all finished, my piece measures from top all the way down to the bottom, um, about 35 inches. So if you want yours bigger than, um, like lengthwise than, than mine, like longer, it will take more yarn than what is mentioned in the description box. I'm um, giving you an approximate uh, amount of yardage for a piece that is 35 inches long. And of course, if you want it shorter, it's gonna take less. But Okay, so for this particular project, I used, this is called uh, from Yarn Snob Yarns from um, the yarn company Knits all done or yarn snob yarns.com it's a hand dyed 100 super wash merino and the color is called tiff um, now of course you do not have to use this yarn this is a medium weight number four it is on a bit on a thinner side of a medium weight number four that's why i made a gauge swatch in case you do gauge yours um but for the size that i did i made like i made about a medium um uh, and 
this this yarn for mine and then I'm going we're going to be using a size I which is a five and a half millimeter crochet hook all right so if you want to make it longer than mine the multiple of the stitch is three plus two so uh your chain needs to be ev evenly divisible by three and then you add two more to it now remember the long chain that you do is um going to be folded over from your back side all the way to your front side and sewn together so that will be the length of your project um for me if you look at me in the picture i chained 236 stitches for my beginning chain remember you adjust yours in a multiple of three plus two for however long or short that you'd like it it's very easy to adjust the length anyways so once you get the length of yours how you want it uh, row one we're going to do a single crochet in the second chain from the hook so remember we don't count the one that's on our hook there's one there's two we do a single crochet in the second and then one single crochet in every stitch for the length of our chain yeah this yarn's actually really more like a three weight i guess but between a three and a four so row one is one single in every stitch until you get to the end of the row So we finished row one and we're going to start the repeat rows now. So it is a five row repeat. Rows two, three, four, five, and six are the repeat rows, but they're very easy to do. So we'll go ahead and start row two. If you look, you'll uh, find some time stamps there that'll take you uh, directly back to the beginning of each of these rows. Row two, we're going to chain one and turn our work. So that chain one does not count as a stitch. Now we're going to go right back into this very, very first stitch here. And we're going to work two double crochets into it. Like that. Now we're going to skip two stitches. We're going to start the repeat. Skip two. Repeat of the row. Skip, skip. And in the next, we're going to work three double crochets into the same stitch. There's one, two, and three. Again, skip two, skip, skip, and in the next, three doubles into the next. There's one, two, three. Repeat again, skip two, skip, skip. And in the next, three doubles into the same stitch. So we're going to go ahead and repeat this pattern until we get to the last three stitches of our row. All right, I've been, come to the end of row two, and I have three stitches that remain. So I'm going to skip two, and I'm going to put two double crochets into the last, and that will end that row. And then we'll go ahead and begin row three. So we're going to chain one, which does not count in a stitch, and turn our work. So we are going to put one double crochet right here into the very first stitch. Like that. Now we're going to be working into these spaces here. Now they're not chain one spaces, but they're just spaces in between these sets of three. So we're going to jump to this very first space right here and we're going to work three double crochets right into it. So there's one, two, and three. And now we're going to work across and we're going to work three double crochets in the space in between the sets of three double crochets from the previous row. 
So we just go right into it and work three doubles. Like that. And then we jump over here to the next spot, which you can see pretty, pretty well. One more three doubles. Jump over here to the next spot and we'll work three doubles. And we're going to continue doing this until we get to the last space of our row. Three doubles here. Just like that. So continue putting three doubles in each of these little spaces here until you make it here to the last space of your row. All right, I'm coming to the end of row three. So I put three double crochets here into my last space. And now I'm gonna go ahead and end by putting a double crochet into my very last stitch. And that will end row three. And now we're gonna begin row four. So we're gonna chain one and turn our work. So we're gonna start off by putting one double crochet into the very first stitch. Like that. And then into this space right here, we're going to put one double crochet. Just like that. And now what we're going to do is skip these three doubles and into the next space in between these sets of three, we're going to work three double crochets. And we're going to work three double crochets in each of these spaces until we get to the end of row four. Or until we get to the last space. So we're not chaining one in between the spaces. So we're just doing the three doubles and directly jumping over to the next space and working three doubles. So I'm gonna repeat this until we get to the last space of the row. All right, so I'm coming to the end of row four. I did three double crochets into this space and then we have one set of three left and then right here, there's a double crochet and a set of three. So in this space right here, we're going to put one double crochet into that space and then one double crochet into the last stitch, just like that. And that's how we end row four. So now we're gonna start row five. We're gonna chain one, turn our work. Now row five is actually uh, row five and six are actually the same. They're just one double crochet in every single stitch. So I'm gonna put a double crochet right back into the very first stitch and double crochet in every stitch across. Now we don't double crochet in these spaces, okay? We don't, don't, don't double crochet in those. Just double crochet on top of every stitch until we get to the end of the row. Just like this. Okay, I made it to the end of row five. So we're gonna start row six by chaining one and turning our work. And we're just gonna repeat what we did on row five. Uh, for row six, it's just one double crochet in every stitch until we make it to the end of the row. All right.
right, I've made it to the end of row six and that completes the repeat rows. So for row seven, we would start again repeating rows two. So it's rows two, three, four, five, six. And we just keep repeating those rows. Remember there's timestamps below. And remember to look in the description box. It'll tell you uh, for, for your size approximately how wide you need to make your panel. So for the size I'm making, um, I needed mine to be about 9 to 10 inches wide. Something like that. Now when you end your panel, that's why I give you a little bit, there's a little bit of leeway there. Uh, so you can end it on the correct row. You can, you repeat these rows until you get it to the size that it says in the description box but your last row you want to end on just one row of double crochet like that that way when you sew the panels together it'll still the, the repeat will still continue because you'll have one here and then when you sew your other panel it'll end in one so it'll be like two there and then the repeat will continue so this repeat rows two three four five six until uh the desired uh width that you need for your size ending on a row six or a row five repeat all right so once you get your two panels made remember the description box will to give you a, approximately how many inches yours should measure and the length really depends on you <clears throat> but um if you want to make it a shirt or a dress or short dress long dress whatever that's completely up to you so we're going to take we're going to sew both panels the same way so we take them and you we want to put them together make sure whatever row that you in we're sewing them wrong side out so whatever you uh one you want to face right side uh put it to the inside that when we when we flip it inside out that will be facing right side i don't really think it matters too much but if there's a row that you a side that you like better put it on the inside okay now we're going to sew together at the single crochet row from the very beginning um i'm going to do it from the bottom up so we're going to leave about a seven inch opening at the top for the sleeves so if you want to take a tape measure and just mark off approximately it'd be about the same for everybody of course you can try it on if you need one a little bit smaller or bigger but about seven inches or so i'd say no less than seven but around seven or so if you want to mark off a spot there for that you can and then once you get that done i'm going to simply now you can use a yarn needle if you choose but i'm going to simply slip stitch mine together so I'm going to take my hook here and I'm just going to start in the very first stitch down here <clears throat> and the very first stitch on the other panel go into them I'm going through both loops draw through leave a tail there that way you can sew it in later and chain one now I'm going to go to the next stitch on the front panel I'm going through both loops the next stitch that is matching the same one you know on the opposite panel right over here and slip stitch oops that didn't work out remember you can use uh a yarn needle if you choose don't slip stitch it extremely extreme extremely tight otherwise it'll kind of bunch up on you but what I'm doing is I'm just going through uh, one stitch on this panel and then the same stitch on the opposite panel pulling through and slip stitching I'm gonna do this all the way up until I get to where I have about seven inches left and that's what I'm gonna leave for the arm opening and this is how you do both pieces the same um, make sure you leave the same number of stitches on for the arm opening if you want to count uh, make sure both sides have the same amount <clears throat> and then we will once that's done we'll sew it together on the front and back it's getting close so you see I'm just slip stitching it 
Alrighty, I'm gonna go ahead and finish out this panel here. All right, so we got our two pieces uh, side sewed up and now we're gonna sew them together. Remember, keep them on the wrong side still, don't flip them right side out. So you can see the seam of mine is still on the wrong side. So we're gonna sew up through the center. So as you can see, I've already sewed the back part together and now we're gonna you want to do this it's the same for the back and the front so I'll go ahead and show you how we do it it's pretty much the same as we just did except for one minor adjustment and it's not even something that you have to do um, I'll show you here so we're gonna sew up the front and back panels so as you can see that's sewn up already so we take And we start, now this is the only difference that I'm doing um, when I'm sewing up the front and back as opposed to the sides. I'm going through the front loop on this piece and then I'm going through the back loop on the opposite piece. And grabbing my yarn, I'm pulling it through, and then I will chain one and now I'm going to slip stitch and that's how I'm going to slip stitch together. And instead of going through both loops on each side like we did on uh, on each stitch like we did on the side panels, I'm only going through the front loop on this piece and then the back loop on the opposite piece. Now you don't have to do this if you don't want to. So remember again, I'm only going through the front loop here and then on this one, the back loop. You can go through both loops if you want. It's still going to sew it up and everything. But I'll show you why I did this. And this is how I'm going to sew it up until I get near the top. I'm going to have to leave an opening for the back and the neck. Head opening. I'm going to have to leave a head opening, I guess. You see that? So when you sewed the sides and you went through both loops, it you know it, it makes a, a seam like this. So that's your side seam. And um, when you go through one loop, it makes this seam. I just there's a little bit more uh, detail there. You see, those are the loops that we're not going through. The back loop on one and the front loop on the other are now visible on the when you flip your work right, right side out this will be what's on the front so if you don't like that that little added decoration there and you want it to just be a plain um seam like this you just go through both loops but if you want that little added detail you just go through one loop on each side like I'm doing. Either way, it's up to you. It's your, it's your garment. You do it how you want. So I'm going to go ahead and continue and I'll let you know here in just a minute how far we up we need to go uh, before we stop before our head hole opening. All right, so when sewing up your back panel, or your, you got your two side panels. When sewing up the back, you want to go all the way to the top until you have about four inches left. So you see that from right up here I stopped right around the four inch mark and then you can tie that off and hide that tail and then when you flip it you want to sew it the exact same way you start from the bottom and you go all the way up but you want to leave a little bit wider opening in the front not sure why I left such a long tail there but um, the front you want to leave about from up here down about a seven inch opening kind of like your arms okay now you can adjust that if you want like say you don't want the v um, on your chest to go down so low you can sew it up a bit more um, maybe you want it to go down lower then you can leave it open another inch or so that's fine but if you leave it open too far it will start to get the sleeves will start to fall off your shoulders but hey maybe you like that look too but yeah, so about four inch opening you leave on the back when you're sewing up the back side and about seven, as you can see there, 
I left for the front. And then what we do is we want to go ahead and hide all these tails that we got hanging around and then we'll flip our work right side out and then we'll um, do some edging around the neck and around the bottom and the sleeves. So I have flipped my work right side out and there is my front seam. I like it. Here's the front of my work because it has the wider opening and so let's go ahead and start and flip our work to the back. That way when we edge everything the seam will, or the starting point will be in the back and it won't be as visible. All right. All I'm going to do is going to go around the collar. Let me fold this up a little bit so it's easier to manage. All right. I'm going to go around the collar area with a row of single crochet. So, all right. So I'm going to start by going into this first stitch here. Right here. Sorry about that noise. And I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to go back into the same stitch and I'm going to single crochet into that. And I'm going to work one single crochet in every stitch around the collar or the neck opening area here um, on the front and the back. It should just be one solid round. I'll show you what we're going to do though when we get to the point on the front. So continue to work one single crochet in every stitch. This is just cleaning up any edges, you know. And I'll meet up with you right here at the point on the front. All right, so I've made it to the seam on the front and you can see here, I'm gonna do a single crochet two together over these two stitches right here. So you can see that they have been sewn. So we're gonna go into this one and draw up a loop and then we're going to jump over and go into the next one the last stitch that we sewed together and draw up a loop and then yarn over and go all through all three loops on your hook like that and then we're going to continue around putting one single crochet in every stitch until we make it back around to our starting point that is in the back that just kind of sewed that up there a little bit better all right, I made it back around to the back. I'm not gonna do a uh, single crochet two together here. I just single crocheted in my last stitch and now I'm gonna end by slip stitching into my first stitch over here that I made. And then I'll tie that off and hide any remaining tails. You can go around again if you want, around the neck, you know, for like a thicker, thicker uh, neckline, but I'm just gonna do the one. All right, now I'll hide that tail. Now I'm going to go around the sleeves, so pretty much just a row of single crochet around each of the sleeves. You can make more rows if, if you choose, that's up to you. Let's look here. All right, so I like to start right in, um, see the crease or see the set where we sewed the stitch next to it. I'm not, even, I'm not even gonna go into the spot that we sewed. I'm gonna chain one and go back in that same spot and single crochet. And I'm gonna work one single crochet in every stitch of the sleeve all the way around until I get back to my starting point. We'll do both sleeves the same. Now remember, if you want to do more rounds of single crochet on your sleeves to make them more of a cap, more capped sleeved or longer than what they are, that is up to you. Or double crochet sleeves. But I'm just going to do the one round. So I'm going to go around one single crochet in every stitch all the way around my sleeve back to my starting point all right once you make it back to your starting point on your sleeve don't put any stitches in the seam area right here just single crochet in your last stitch then come on over here to your first stitch and end by slip stitching into it and then you can tie that off hide that tail and do both sleeves the same all right so once you get the sleeves done your neck done i'm just gonna i'm gonna wrap the bottom with single crochet 
So, to clean up the edges. Now, when you're going around the bottom, you can see that you're going to be working in the sides of these double crochets. So, what you want to do on the bottom is, <clears throat> I'm going to kind of start here um, on the near side seam. You want to evenly space out your single crochets the best that you can. Now, it's not going to be... The number that I have is going to be different than the number you have because, you know, we're just doing our best to space them out. But go ahead and go through a spot in uh, chain one, go back through the same spot in single crochet, and then we're going to work around and evenly space out single crochets all the way around. Now, at, at this point, you could also uh, add fringe, which I actually thought about doing that. Um, that's something you can do if you want. But, I don't know. I think I'm just going to stick with the rows of single crochet on mine. Evenly spacing them all the way around. Now remember, you can't get them to space too far apart or the bottom of your article here of clothing will be too bunched up. So you want to try to get them evenly spaced as best as possible so if there's any part of this particular project that you want to take the most time on it's when you sew it together and then and then this part right here where it's hard to see the stitches so uh what i always try to just give advice on when you see a double crochet i always try to put two singles to every double that's kind of a guide i go by and it's hard to do sometimes but i do my best to try to do that and this is what I'm going to do all the way around the bottom. Okay, so down here at the bottom, what I did was, once I finished that row of single crochet, I went ahead and I did one more row. So I have two rows of single crochet at the bottom. You could do more if you want. That's completely up to you. Or you could just stop with the one. Um, but if you want to make a little bit thicker of a border, sure, go right ahead. Um, but that's it. Um, you end with the slip stitch, tie off, hide your tails, and that's all there is to it. So I hope that you enjoyed my tutorial. Hey, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Check me out on Facebook and Instagram. If you make this, please, 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 I'd love to see a picture of it. Come uh, show me a picture on uh, Facebook or Instagram, either one. Um, I'd love to see your color choices, the yarn you chose, and see how you look in it. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Bye, guys.